Hello and welcome to Development Matters. On the program today, we debate the controversial issue of dual citizenship. If you really love your country, then that shouldn't be an issue for renouncing your citizenship for wherever you are, come back home and lend your support. There are a, whole, a pool of Liberians in Liberia holding government positions and otherwise, who actions can otherwise be described as very unpatriotic. Are they more loyal to those abroad who sent an estimated half a billion dollars a year to reconstruct their country and to help with the survival of their fellow Liberians back home? Also on the program today, we profile a Liberian entrepreneur who, against all odds, has become a major exporter of palm oil. And as I sit here, my oil is not in Boston. I just ship one continent. Next on the program, we take a trip back to our past with a look at Edina, one of Liberia's oldest cities and birthplace of a president. This is our founder, 1832, December 18th. Finally on the program, we go under the Palava Hut. Today again, we are under the Palava Hut to talk about something very important. Mm? Yeah. And the important thing here is open defecation. But we begin with dual citizenship. Should Liberia allow dual citizenship for its nationals? Let's debate it. My name is Leon Mansa, and I'll be your host for today's uh, discussion. Currently, under Liberian law, if you're a Liberian citizen and you obtain the citizenship of another country, you automatically lose your Liberian citizenship. Is this right? Is this good for Liberia? To answer this question, we've got two prominent Liberians who will be debating this issue on the proposition that dual citizenship is good for Liberia. Speaking on behalf of, of the affirmative is Mr. John Lloyd, and arguing against the affirmative will be Mr. Isaac Smith. We have an audience in the studio, and we would like to get the opinion both before as well as after the debate. How many of you are for the affirmative? So we've got four individuals, excellent. And how many are against the affirmative? We've got three, fantastic. Mr. Lloyd, you've got three minutes. Thank you very much, Leon. The issue of du dual citizenship has been put into focus in the last decade because of the resulting effects of the civil war which occurred in Liberia. Over a period of a decade and a half, Liberia lost an estimated 1.5 million of its citizens to nations abroad. With that outflow of its citizenry, Liberia lost a huge pool of educated individuals and it divided our country between those abroad and those at home. At this time of reconstruction in our nation, the focus now is upon how we can regain these lost resources contained within the talent pool of our natural born citizenry abroad. How can we attract the capital that they have in foreign countries? How can we regain the educational resources that can be brought back to rebuild our economy and our social systems? And also how we can attract the talent pool to bring in innovation that is necessary for reconstruction and development of our nation. And now we're on to Mr. Isaac Smith, again, who will argue against the affirmative. Thank you very much, Leon. It is indeed no doubt that every country has the right to require of its citizens total loyalty. For now, we have citizens who are considered citizens of America and Liberia who themselves believe that they are by far better than Liberians who have equal level of education, training, skills, and abilities. We have seen situations where people come to Liberia, not necessarily because of their love for country, perhaps for what they can gain. And when there are times of crisis, we have those very people fleeing the country. So I believe that dual citizenship is not uh, an issue that should be granted. It will create a situation of split loyalty and uh, it is not good for the country at this time. Thank you both gentlemen. And now we'll move on to, you both get a chance to rebut each other's uh, points. First of all, let's address loyalty. Loyalty cannot be defined merely in the context of an individual residing in his own country perpetually and not 
uh, going to any foreign land. We have to look at this argument from the context of how our citizens, an estimated 1.5 million, fled the country through a process of civil war. They left this nation and went to foreign lands to seek survival. And in that process, they gained employment. That employment was transformed into remittances, an estimated half a billion dollars that is sent back through Western Union, MoneyGram, and through other sources on an annual basis that keeps our economy alive. As a matter of fact, on a per capita basis, Liberia is the second in the world in terms of remittances and in terms of foreign di direct aid to, to, to the nation by its foreign nationals. If you calculate the, the, the total amount of uh, foreign aid we get from other governments and other international organizations, uh, the remittances of Liberians alone uh, surpass that number by far. We can transform the disadvantages that we had throughout the Civil War into an advantage if we attract and properly attract our own nationals back home. And now on to Mr. Smith for his rebuttal. Uh, we cannot overemphasize the, the social effect that dual citizenship will have on our country. Uh, for example, there are Liberians who are in colleges in Liberia who have had experiences and training and skills and abilities to do many things as Liberians from the United States who go back home. But the preferences are always given to Liberians from abroad. To, to continue with the split loyalty issue, when, for example, we had the Ebola crisis in Liberia, there were many Liberians who were American citizens. The first thing they did was to take the flight, leave the country. And now let's move on to our audience. What has been done when it comes to making sure that, for instance, a Nigerian who has come to Liberia and we're accepting them to naturalize, and uh, what is the assurance that they've given up, given up their birth citizenship? With the issue of other nationals coming, if there is a problem with our immigration system, our naturalization system, then we need to tighten it up so that we can ensure that those who are coming in are doing what they ought to do as naturalized citizens. But I think my concern is for Liberians to have total and absolute loyalty to the country. You have a lot of uh, Liberians in the diaspora who are very educated. There, there's a lot of people in the health fee, in education fee that Liberia could benefit from. And you talk about the, 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 the remittance that goes to Liberia and, and what it entails. And I think the, the last um, 2016 World Bank figure showed that it's about 29% of GDP. And so you can elaborate on that. There are a whole lot of benefits, you know, uh, alluding to what you're saying that can be gained economically. But this particular issue of dual citizenship has been a fertile ground for demagogues who have a shallow argument of loyalty and they use that basically to create a social divide between Liberians abroad and, at, and Liberians at home. Now we're going to move into closing arguments for the proposition that dual citizenship is good for Liberia. And we'll start off with Mr. Smith. Liberia needs every Liberian. I think it is time now that if Liberia is where your heart is, then you will go home with total and complete loyalty for your country. Dual citizenship has become an issue that has been used for economic gain. Even within the United States where there may be laws against dual citizenship, it has been relaxed to the lowest level for economic opportunities for their own nation and, and for the development of their citizenry. So I thank you very much for this opportunity and I look forward to the law of 1972 being repealed and that dual citizenship become the law of the land in Liberia very soon. Okay, so you've heard the arguments. So let's see you know, how the audience have uh, uh, changed or not changed their perspective from the, uh, from the discussion. So by show of hands, who's for the proposition of dual citizenship uh, in Liberia? Wow, so we've got five, we've got one convert. And who's against? Two, well there you have it. Thank you for your contribution to this you know, critical national debate on dual citizenship in Liberia. Thank you to the audience also for watching. My name is Leon Mensa. Until next time, good night. This is Development Matters. 
we will be back in just a moment. You must know who to vote for. You must know who to vote for. Decision you made today could determine your future. You must know who to vote for. You must know who to vote for. String all your candidates before you choose to leave. You must know who to vote for. You better know who to vote for. Say you better vote for your future. Hello and welcome back to Development Matters. And now for Development Profile. Kabe Sombo is a fantastic success story and a powerful testament of how small investments in providing skills to women can produce big results. And this is the story. I am a woman of two children with two different fathers. Life had not been easy for me. And when they walk in, I had to leave my country and went to Guinea and not selling my clothes just to feed my family. Even that could not help me. I said it was better for me to go back home and die there. Her life soon changed, however, after she heard of the Goldman 10,000 Women Project funded by Goldman Sachs to provide basic business skills to women like Sumbo. This day I was sitting in the market, worried, thinking on how my life would be. My friend told me, say, oh, that's a program I gave time by the name of CHF. They are treating women. Since you say you want to be in business, I think you will take opportunity of it. I said, wow. And I got there. I passed the interview. <laughs> so they called me for me to go to the program. The program provided her skills in, among other things, record keeping. As I sit here today, I know how much all I got in my warehouse. Accounting. I know how much my daughter carried to the bank yesterday. Reinvesting profits. Do all those things correctly so that my business can go on. And customer service. I know my human resources, I know how to deal with my customers and my employees. She no longer hides when the tax collector comes. Because the program has taught me to do all those things correctly so that my business can go on. Armed with her new business skills and with a small loan, she soon expanded her palm oil business and is now exporting oil. She, in fact, cracked the U.S. market. I shipped my first container of oil, 150 things after I graduated from the program. Sumbo has made her country proud. During the graduation, my president was so impressed about me. She awarded me 100 acres of land to improve my business. Sumbo can now better support her family. Because of this program, my life has changed. Is even providing jobs for other Liberians. My children, my family, my relatives, and even my countrymen have benefited from it. She's also passing on the skills she learned from the Goldman program to other women in Liberia. I gave you a story about one of the market women that her husband always used to beat on her. Mm -hmm. And the woman was making money to him. But because we were doing business under the table, she did not know that. And from this training, I was able to teach that woman. So when she bring her money every day we market, before 30 days, that woman had 10,000 Liberian dollars. We took out the children's school fee, we paid four months rent, and the woman said had something like $2,800 with the money that she had to do the business. I took her carry this one to the bank. Mm -hmm. And today that woman got a two bedrooms apartment, and every time her husband would come, my care Mommy Pepe, thank you. <laughs> so it is because of the program that I'm able to do all these things. She was a special guest at the Clinton Global Initiative in 2012. Featured articles have appeared about Kabe's story in Bloomberg and the Washington Post.
all of this is the result of a small investment in changing the life of one woman. As I sit here, my heart is not in Boston. I just ship one continuum. So the program has been so important, great to me, because I was on the surf, but now I am a deserved woman hoping to help other people to improve their life. I see HS and Goma side have improved my life. Thank you. This is Development Matters. We will be back in just a moment. I'm talking about my own born future. No matter what you ask, then my message will reach you. Corruption killing all, we not satisfied. Make my heart burn slow, whatever I testify. But certain people in the country, I won't look defy. Welcome back to Development Matters. As we now take a look at a nugget from our history. On today's edition of Historical Nuggets, we look at Edina, one of Liberia's oldest cities. This is what founded 1832, December 18. That was 10 years after the first set of settlers from the United States landed in Liberia and 15 years before Liberia would become independent. No wonder Edina, located at the mouth of the St. John River in Grand Bassa County, reeks with history. It is the birthplace of Liberia's 12th president, Joseph James Cheeseman. It also has ties to other key players in Liberia's early history, including the country's second president, Stephen Allen Benson, whose heirs still call Edina home. As a Benson, the great grandson of the late Stephen Allen Benson. The city was a thriving place in its heydays. The settlers quickly established a school and by 1839, they had built two churches that still stand today. Early residents were traders. Cheeseman, for example, ran a robust business, bringing goods from Monrovia and the United States. For those days, he had a pretty good-sized warehouse and office, the ruins of which still stand on the banks of the St. John River. Edina shows what is possible when all Liberians come together, irrespective of ethnic backgrounds. There is a monument here to Bob Gray, a Bassa King, or chief, who welcomed the settlers and provided them with critical support. Bob Gray the one that gave them safe drinking water and then gave them a place to set up. But his Bassa name was Kanasi. Today, the city is a far cry from the bustling port city it was in its heydays, mentioned in the 1839 Constitution of the Commonwealth of Liberia as one of the country's major cities. It has lost most of its residents, but there is no more big-time trading. People are principally farmers and fishermen. The activity we do for us power, those that are in the position of able you know, to make rest farm, they make a rest farm. For majority of the citizens here, we make a sour farm. And then we who are this level, we mostly get our little from the water. We set basket for coffee, we set tash, we set net. But with all this wonderful history and beautiful scenery, there is much potential for bringing Edina back to life, possibly as a tourist attraction. And this is a nugget from our history. From historical nugget, we go under the Palava hut for a very important health message. Today again we are under the Palava hut to talk about something very important. Hmm? And the important here is open defecation. The small word for it is just open, going anywhere and doing, you know, pooping, pooping anywhere. You do it like that, the fly will come and sit down on it. And when the fly sit down on it, it move from there and go and sit down on the rest. When the fly sit down on the rest, you eat the rest, you get sick. Yeah. When the fly sit down on the car, you fly, and, 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 and you go and eat it, you get sick. Yeah. So, I bring you people to tell you all that we must learn to use the small room. Well, when you go, you do it, no fly will come. And when you, know, when you get sick, 
you will not be able to look at the children, the children will not go to school. When you set the family sick, so that's why I call you people today. The small room over there. Go there and use the small room. Don't send out us any more to do it. Hey, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. 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 This is Development Matters. And now we get a letter from the diaspora. Dear Liberia, future generation, particularly the most vulnerable communities of Darwin District number one Grand Bassa County. I bring you greetings from my heart. We see you so much as precious jewels. We should be enrolled in school and be taken care of to be a better person for the nation we so love. And it is for you we have come to the Darwin Village to build a boarding school. Janja Village of Hope Crest Center environment where you will be able to go to school free. We will educate you so you can bring light into your family to take your family to the places they've never been before. And you can do it. Janja Village of Hope is named after my mother. I was once like you. I grew up in the village called Bang Town in Grand Bassa County. I grew up with my grandparents after my mom died. I know what it is for a child to sleep hungry. I know what it is for a child to go to school with its school fees. I know what it is for a child to go to school with our books. So that's why I'm sending this letter to you from the bottom of my heart, appealing to your parents to just give education a chance. We love you and God bless you. Sincerely yours, Magdalene Harris, on behalf of John J. Village of Hope. That's our program for today. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you next week on another edition of Development Matters. Goodbye. <laughs>